West End Wilma viewers. Hey guys. This is exciting. Yeah, it is. Um, for those of you who don't know us, I'm Jordan. I'm Russ. And you might recognise us because we also run a theatre channel called From the Wings. But today we are here for West End Wilma, so we're doing a lovely little collaboration. So thank you hey. to West End Wilma for that opportunity. Thank you. Today we are bringing you something absolutely wonderful and exciting. We are going to interview the cast and creatives behind Heather's hey. The Musical. So I am joined by Lawrence O'Keefe and Kevin Murphy, the writers of Heathers. I've been talking to so many of your fans and what they say is the balance between the movie and the musical is perfect. It's nice yeah, they're, they're always very, very happy that um, the, the, the great quotes are still in there and that's what I think they love about it. But the music is... Sometimes we've had to move them yeah. <laughs> because plot just events yeah. change but we have to yeah. make sure that uh, the chainsaw line yeah. oh, the chainsaw always ends line. up with a home yeah. that, that's been in a few different places <laughs> for those of you who don't know about the chainsaw line you need to come and watch it and then yeah. you'll understand <laughs> we're obsessed with the entire okay. soundtrack oh, so um, a lot of people at home are <laughs> begging the question when will we have uh, a London the middle of the song. Look under your chair. It's right there now. <laughs> you get an album. Um, we're, we're, we wish. We're, yes. uh, it is being discussed. Oh, fantastic. Everybody agrees it's a good idea. Somehow we will very much like to make it happen. Okay. Going to go for another creative night team. So this is Gary Lloyd, choreographer of Heathers. Hello. So this is all everybody at Western Wilma. Hey, Western Wilma. <laughs> so, when did you start your involvement with Heather? Yeah, I um, Paul and Bill and I worked on Carrie together. No, I've seen it once. So Heather's I kind of reared its head, 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 head while we were doing that. So we've been talking about it for quite a while um, and getting very, very excited about it. So it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Were you thrilled when you were asked <laughs> yeah, to be part of the team? Especially when doing all the research and really yeah, getting into exactly. the material and music yeah. and the energy yeah, of, the, of the show, it's, yeah. it's really quite something. And you've been so blessed because you've had original material and new material to work with. So you've had yeah. a bit of, we're, we're bit of both worlds. Part of the development process, which has been the most exciting part. Yeah. What were your influences then when you came on board? What was the main influences for your choreography? Um, well, I'm a child of the 80s, so this is the movement of my youth coming through in the choreography. So it was kind of a busman's holiday, really, in terms of um, just letting all of that flow. And But I think um, the challenges in terms of the choreography were just, just making the movement work for each of the characters. So obviously the Heathers have got their specific movement pattern, and then the boys, Ram and Kurt, you know, they, they, they move a particular way. And all the songs are very different to one another, so... What I love yeah. as well is there's such great elements of um, really like hardcore dance and you've got real good moments of comedy right. that you've played with, yeah. which everybody thoroughly enjoys. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of the show. You know, you flip between comedy and then high production value and then you've got these really dark moments and you never quite know where you are. So I think it keeps the audience on the edge of their seats all the way through. Yeah. Right. Everybody, I'm joined by Paul Taylor Mills, ultimate producer. Oh, that's very kind. It's very exciting. <laughs> What made you go, I'm going to bring Heathers to London? So I've kind of uh, developed a reputation for myself. I'm not sure if it's a good reputation or a bad one, but just of taking those more subversive, slightly left of centre titles. So over the years I've done In the Heights, which uh, people felt that perhaps a Latin rap R&B musical, remember this was all pre-Hamilton, yeah. so I thought maybe that won't work, and now the world's a very different place, but Carrie and Sideshow and Bat Boy, which is how I met Larry. Um, and so I saw the show off Broadway and <laughs> fell in love with the show. And I did something which I never do, which you've done this week, but I saw the show twice. Um, <laughs> and I was like, there's something here. There really is something here. But I'm not sure if this cake is cooked yet. And I, I then, a year later, Andrew Lloyd Webber asked me to take over the other palace with a view that we would create a space to present, develop, nurture, foster, tweak new and old musicals. Um, and then I approached Larry and I said, listen, I've been given this incredibly rare opportunity to uh, workshop shows. I want to do Heathers. And to be honest, I thought he was going to say, pull bugger off. I am deeply offended. Uh, my show is ready. It's been printed. Go away. And he didn't. They just jumped at it. And they went, oh my gosh, this is what we always wanted. We wanted the opportunity to develop it because when they were first developing it, you never have time. You never have time to work. You're too busy worrying about the costumes of the set. So you don't have time to actually invest in the material, the book and the songs. And then we did the workshop. The workshop was only lasted a week. It sold out in an hour. 
Lin Manuel was there, James Corden was there, Andrew was there, everybody came to this workshop. So I thought, oh, I think this might be a thing. Then we moved it to the other palace for eight weeks, and with a view that we did what the other palace was meant to do from the beginning, which was to be able to try the material and to play the, with the material. And the version of the show which you'll be seeing on Thursday is, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Is, um, it's important, that. Welcome to my life. <laughs> um, the version of the show which you will see on Thursday is almost unrecognisable from that workshop that happened. Act two is completely different. There's new songs, there's new characters. And we wanted the opportunity to, to get it right, you know. And I'm, I'm so proud and pleased of what the boys have done. Um, and Andrew. Andrew has been crucial to the rewrites. The, the new song in Act 2 was actually his idea. Yeah, the new song in Act 2, I am obsessed with. I'm obsessed with it too. I, I mean, I'm obsessed with the I whole thing. I fangirl over my own show, it's really embarrassing. I, I mean, it's not <laughs> because it's so successful. And like you say, it's had the luxury to go from a workshop to the other palace and then mm. here. And I don't think, I can honestly say, I haven't seen a, an audience react to a show the way they react to this. It's yeah. like, almost like concert that's the, because that's they the just love it. That's the most special thing for me. How amazing is this? I have been invited to sit at the popular table. <laughs> I feel like I've made it in the world now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by Tashan Williams, Sophie Isaacs and Jodie Steele, who play the Heathers in Heathers the Musical. How is it playing the most iconic trio in musical theatre history ever? Epic. Amazing. <laughs> and we love each other to pieces as well. We have yeah. so much fun. Yeah. So well, do you know, my boyfriend, Liam, was in the so workshop with so, and I was in China when they were doing yes. it, so I never got to see it. And I was just seeing all this social media stuff. I'd heard of Heathers um, at drama school, because when it was on off-Broadway, it was a real Everyone at drama school was talking to about it. <laughs> yeah, Dead Girl Walking in every, every little music. Yeah. Um, and I was like, what? okay, what is the deal with this? And I just remember going to it and everything, like, because of, of his feet being like, Jesus. And he was like, Jode, honestly, I can't ex explain it. And I was like, okay, cool. And then, you know, so Bex, Dom, like, and Jamie, you no, know, honestly, guys, really like, and it's like, it, it, it is something else. And you, you kind of go along with it. You're like, okay, yeah, there's going to be a few groups in there. No no no. no, no, no. We couldn't hear it ourselves because the people were just going crazy. And then you think, well, the novelty will wear off. And it didn't. And no. it's crazy. And it's just got even bigger here. Yeah. yeah. And it's you just think, oh, it's so exactly. lucky. We've got some fun questions to just kind of wrap yeah. up. So, if you could all swap parts for a day, you can play anybody in the company, which part would you play? JD. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> JD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to sing Meant to Be Yours. I'd love, I'd love, yeah, I'd love to play Absolute Psycho. <laughs> I think I'd like to be Veronica. I, just the songs that she sings is so beautiful. Um, so yeah, I think, and, and she gets to play with every single person, and she gets to be nice, and she gets to be a bit of a, she gets a bit of a charmer, she has lots of different elements. JD. Hey JD. I love psychos. I love playing psychos. <laughs> Either that, or hips the door called really Good Geek, because mm. I just, that whole rucksack <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, mm. that, is, that is a good track. It's <laughs> really cute. But yeah, JD, I think he's a gift of part, my God, like that are. Just, yeah, he is the most fancy person in the West End. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't okay. tell him. And it's funny because we know Jamie for Jamie, and yeah. we're like, really, you fancy Jamie? I know, no, yeah. Gorgeous. Everybody it's loves him. Um, as well, who were you most like in school, character wise? If you had to say about any characters, who were you most like? I I went through phases. So there were times when I was when I was a, a Veronica, and there were times when I was a Chandler. So I had like places like that. Yeah. yeah, I would say being a Heather, being a Veronica. I think it's survival as well. It's survival of just getting through. So school is adapting to that all the time. So if you've got to be a bit of a Heather to get through and survive, then you do that, and then. That's not really you, and you might really love. I loved subjects and academics at school, but I also loved sport and I also loved drama. And I, and because I loved all of those different things, I interacted with a broad spectrum of people as well. Yeah. With everyone. Yeah. Well, uh, I was very much into Mac, um, and then I decided, like Mac did, that it was really not the way to go. And then I was really bad at bullies. 
So um, a marker, I guess you could say, for yeah. most of my school. So you had like a bit of a mix then. Yeah. yeah. So off, off that, what do you want your audiences to take away? What message do you want them to take away from Heather's? That you do not have to <laughs> idolise the people you're scared of. Be an individual. Yeah. Be kind. Yeah. Accept pe people for who they are and what they are, because everyone individually has uh, people's individuality is what makes them special. And you should, if we all championed each other's individuality, the world would be a much happier place. Yeah. Rather than either being jealous of yeah. wanting a bit of your shine, if you celebrate that you'll find your own and then that can be celebrated as well. And don't be scared. The, the beautiful thing about Veronica is that she goes against the grain, do you know what I mean? I think at school there's, like Sophie was saying, it's a survival and sometimes you, you just need to be brave enough to not to not be sucked into that kind of group. There's always a group that's at school that you want to be a part of or you just want to keep at arms end. Don't be frightened to have nothing to do with them. Yeah, what they both say, not being afraid to go against the grain. Being individual, knowing there's no one else like you, and that's going to get you bored in life. And yeah, not being sad yeah. Don't be afraid to stand up for what you want. And right. And yeah. right. Fantastic. Well, I have loved sitting at the popular table today. It was a joy. Thank you so much, ladies, Thank for your you. time and have a fantastic run. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by the director of Heather's, Andy Fickman. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm fine. I'm sitting in this gorgeous theatre talking to you. How bad could I be? I'm brilliantly happy right now. I'm so pleased. So, you've been involved with Heather's since yeah, the beginning, exactly like well, from a conceptual <laughs> idea. <laughs> there was birth. And then birth landed in my hands, and that was it. The original um, uh, two producer friends of ours who helped start it, Andy Cohen and J. Todd Harris, came to me one day and said, what do you think of Heathers as a musical? And I said, I think that's great. And then I went and got those two knuckleheads behind us, Kevin, who we did Reefer Madness with, and Larry, who had done Bat Boy in L.A. at the same time, so we were all friends. And then we started our journey. And that journey and he led from LA to New York to now one. So, little fun question. Yeah. If you could be in the show and play any character, who would you want to play? Heather Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> Heather Chandler. I, I think you'd rock a scrunchie. Not even a question. The power of Heather Chandler, her walk, she gets great lighting. She's got the power red. I might be able to rock the heels. Like Heather Chandler, is fierce and, and a horrible, horrible human being who deserves to die, <laughs> but fierce and funny and challenging. And uh, if I could walk for a day in Jody's uh, foot sideways. Little birds. Her little birds. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for bringing Heathers to the UK because we couldn't be more grateful for you pushing our musical theatre scene forward here and we're really appreciative of that. And greatest, greatest creative team around, the greatest designers and actors blowing me away. So, and finally this audience, London audiences, unlike anything in the world. They are, they are spectacular. So thank you guys for having me. You're so welcome. Andy Fickman, everybody. Andy Fickman, everyone. Or Heather Chandler. <laughs> How lucky are we? We are being joined by Carrie Hope Fletcher and Jamie Moscato. Like the role of Veronica and JD are both so vocally demanding, <laughs> if not some of the hardest parts probably ever written vocally for singing. Has that been quite. She yeah. doesn't shut up. Yeah, I mean, she's singing all the time. She's not singing. And then they added a song. And they added, do you have enough? Let's get rid of the one. Yeah. 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 How has it been taking on that vocal demand? <laughs> You're both no stranger to people, I mean, but it's a yeah, it's a whole different beast though, Heather's, and it's definitely sort of opened my eyes to t just taking care of myself a lot more. Um, I've invested in a little steamer as well, and like <laughs> you know stuff like that, just sort of just being a bit more sensible. Yeah. Same. <laughs> It's, it's so great, and I've never seen such a, like I say, an audience reaction to it like I've seen for yours. But fun question, if you could just swap parts for a day and play a different character in the show, who would you play? You're very popular, everybody's picking you. Really? Yeah. It's because he's so wild and like Meant To Be Yours is such an amazing song. I, I, you are going to have to fight Tashan, she also wants to. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'd be Duke. 
a bit of a left field choice. But I would love to see you guys swap for a night. I would think I'd do it fantastic. Maybe we should arrange a Heather's Live Lounge where you all swap songs and you can sing each other's songs. I think, I mean, Degger walking would be a lot more interesting with Tishan, so. Yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for your time, guys. Carrie Hope Fletcher and Joan Muscato, everybody. Oh.